I'll be talking about this room temperature magnetic Scorpion bubbles in central symmetric magnets. So this is our very recent study. Uh, so, so before the talk, I would like to thank like the funding agency like DIE and then SCRB uh, for the support on the Ramanujan and Alikar Research Award, DST uh, for the DST Nanomission Project, and Max Planck Society for the Max Planck and Pattern Group. So okay, so means like I, I means like uh, I have been asked to make it a little bit popular. So that's why I have a little bit put the like very basic things. So it's like maybe so you can ignore uh, if you like don't like it. So like this is like before I go to score me and so what are the like magnetic uh, like things magnetic states we know in our like in a magnetic materials. So we easily know this like these are paramagnetic materials. So then some so we get paramagnetic uh, material depending upon the spin will be. Like aligned, uh, like uh, parallel to each other, uh, so where all the spin uh, align in one direction, then anti antiferromagnetic, where all this means like two like uh, neighboring spin uh, align <coughs> opposite direction to each other, and then ferromagnetic with a diff diff different sublattices having a different magnetic moment. So in this case, we is like one thing common is like in uh, like all the magnetic moments are collinear uh, in uh, nature. So then we go to like little bit, little bit complicated where these magnetic moments are not collinear, but they are non-collinear. So we know the helical magnetic structure where the like they are, they are like means like that there is a period of propagation where the magnetic moment uh, actually <coughs> propagate perpendicular to the propagation direction. Uh, and then we have also like a, a triangular antiferromagnet where like all the spins lie in one plane, but they are non-collinear like one. Uh, so between two spins, the angle is like something like 120 degree. And if you go a little bit like uh, more like like uh, so where like uh, we can get canted uh, like canted kind of like a spin structure. Uh, this is non-coplanar, and we get also like non-non-linear uh, magnetic structure. So these are the basic things like very well done uh, to like uh, almost like to, to, to the magnetic society. Now I will little bit in, introduce about the scorpions what means I am going to talk about today. Okay, the scorpions are like vortex uh, like object with a swirling spin configuration. What do, what does that mean? So this is uh, this I have put a like actually uh, like uh, schematic like uh, diagram of a like a scorpion. So like if you see. In the certain center of the spin is pointing down and if you go to the periphery the spin will be pointing up and in between the, they rotate in a particular way okay so this is this scorpion is whatever the picture i have shown this is a called a kneel kind of scorpion okay so the the name come from the like uh, if you take like a like a cross-sectional area so the name come from like you, you get like a cycloid kind of propagation or a kneel kind of domain one 360 degree domain one. So, so interpreted as localized spin structure with particle uh, like behavior. Why uh, we call it particle like because the whole spin structure they behave like a single object, and they are topologically uh, protected against any uh, continuous deformation. That means this structure cannot be continuously deformed. Like we cannot get a like half square mean or a half one by four square mean. Either this square mean will exist or after a certain energy like. Uh, some uh, external uh, parameter or something, so they can completely disappear. So, so it can be one or zero. So we cannot get any state in between uh, that one and zero. And they are always defined by winding number. So I will little bit introduce about that uh, later. So that means like they have a chiral kind of magnetic structure. So winding number is one or any uh, like integer kind of thing. This I have uh, shown a chiral, chiral domain. Or, so this is which is like winding number having one. And if they don't, it is not chiral, the winding number will be zero. Okay. Then what are the like structure actually uh, known actually uh, 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 in this like uh, type of scormion? So scormions are a little uh, like they are like, as I told topological magnetic objects. So so they are defined by this wind, winding number which is de which is defined by the, like this. And what does that mean? So these are like a different kind of like scorpions I am showing here. So already I have shown this neat type of scorpion. This is a block type of scorpion. Oh, 
Uh, so this is the topological object. So so, so we have, it is defined by this winding number one. So I also that like if you take this take two dimensional object like sphere, then we'll project into a sphere. Then you will see that it will uh, project one. So that from that so we can define the what is the winding number. Or similarly, we can get other like uh, kind of topological objects having winding number zero. But this is also topological stable and also these are called merons, which are is topological like winding number half. Okay, I'll quickly go to the what is the applic why people are interested in uh, like uh, scorpions. So if you see, so in like 2008, so uh, Stuart Martin proposed a new kind of like a memory device is called a rest track memory device, where actually we can like uh, record or save our data in, in a na magnetic nanoware by passing spin polarized current. So we can move the domain wall inside this like uh, nanoware. Accordingly, if we keep a reading and writing device, we can read and write our data. So here, actually, the problem was this, to do this, we need a very high current density. Now, when this Scormian was like uh, uh, pro proposed, and people uh, like, uh, so that Scormian can move uh, really in a little bit, like not a little bit in a low current density. And the most important thing is Scormian are topologically stable. Okay, so people have already demonstrated that scorpions can move in uh, like current. So like if you, this is a video, you can see we can like uh, pass uh, uh, current, then we can generate and move this scorpion in a magnet, like, uh, like a thin film. Okay, so with this like uh, introduction, so I'll just show why, I mean, how to stabilize this scorpion. So for stabilization of scorpion, whatever the scorpion I have shown in this uh, like uh, talk, they are called like uh, um, they are called like they are non they are like they are can be stabilized in non centro symmetric material in the non centro symmetric like magnetic material so we can have like this like gyrosinski moria exchange interaction and that is the main component which actually helps in stabilizing scorpions and the, in, like this like competition between j and d so that can give the scorpion size and uh, uh, like uh, period of the helix on this thing Thing. And here I can see, depending upon the uh, direction of the like uh, symmetry of the material and direction of the D, we can get chiral cycloid or chiral helix. And depending on and that, we can get block type scorpion or nil type of scorpion. And also, uh, so this is this scorpion was first time observed in this like uh, manganese silicide, which is a non central symmetric material, chiral uh, magnet. And uh, then uh, by neutron diffraction study, and then the group of Prokura, they did this Lorentz transmission electron microscopy to directly visualize this permanent CD material in 2010. And whatever you see this, like uh, this two, uh, last two like uh, picture, uh, this under focused and over focused, this is the lecture like, really we see in the TM. And then if you do some software, like uh, some like some kind of um, uh, like uh, thing, so then you can uh, map the, what is the spin direction of the spin in your like scorpion. And also the, those, uh, I, what I showed that was like a block scorpion and also there is a new type of scorpion uh, like we found uh, like uh, for the first time, this is called anti scorpion and this is looks like a completely different, you can see two like a two white kind of dots and two black dots kind of thing and this is called, uh, this was found in this uh, uh, MNPT kind of material and in this material, this is very special because here both block and nail kind of, both the structure exist in a one scorpion. Okay, I quickly go to like like this uh, the, uh, the work that I'm, I'm going to show today that we did recently in Niger. This is common in centrosymmetric magnet. So centrosymmetric magnet means so we do not expect any gyrosinski moria interaction. Then then how can we stabilize common in this material? So here actually in this like in most of the like uh, material with having like large uh, magnetic anisotropy. Okay, so this scorpion, whatever I'm uh, showing here, so this is like a like a, in central symmetric magnet where like the computation between the uh, like uh, and the dipolar energy and the like anisotropic uh, in the system can give rise to this uh, like this non central symmetric scorpion. So what we are talking about is this material, this manganese for gallium to uh, gallium to SN. This work is done by my, my PhD student Dora Chakraborty. And so this is like a like a kagomi, you can see the kagomi kind of like a structure uh, uh, with different magne uh, magnetic, uh, sorry, manganese layers. And if you see the mag like uh, M versus T, 
So you, we get like a, a spin reorientation kind of transition around uh, like 780 Kelvin. And the, like the below 80 Kelvin, this is this, uh, the uh, moments are in plane and out of uh, so above the like uh, uh, TSR, the moments are out of uh, out of plane. And when it is out of plane, the computation between the, the magnetic anisotropy and the Dipolar energy, we try to moment to align them in plane. The computation between them can give rise to Scogna. So here actually uh, initially we did some like AC susceptibility measurement where we go, get some kind of features in the associated measurement that we uh, thought that might give this uh, this material might uh, source cornea. If you see a uh, very low temperature like 10 Kelvin, the associated curve is very like uh, usual. There is no features, but at 100 Kelvin or 200 Kelvin, so you see some features uh, uh, appearing on the associated uh, curve. If you take a fast derivative, you can see this uh, in clearly. And this kind of features already we have seen in recently in our like uh, like one of the paper, like uh, material. So when you have spermion, we get this kind of feature in the AC susceptibility when the spermion transition appears. Then so we go to the, this like we try to measure them like in uh, real space that by using Lorentz transmission electron microscopy, which we set here in Niger. So in the normal uh, TM, what we have, we have a two Tesla uh, like pole piece, which is like for the objective lens. Okay. So when we put a magnetic uh, like a magnetic sample, so all this like uh, spin will align in the uh, magnetic field of the objective lens. So that means we cannot use any magnetic sample for like uh, uh, for like imaging. So what we do when we do this imaging for the magnetic sample, we switch up the specimen magnetic field. Sorry, yeah, the objective magnetic field. And instead, we put another small lens below the objective lens, which is called objective mini lens or Lorentz lens. Then, so then we can actually, we can uh, study the magnetic uh, uh, structure in uh, this material. So here, one of the image like uh, uh, diagram. So if you are a domain wall, so we can uh, so get a bright or a dark contrast, uh, dark or bright contrast at the wall position. And the, um, people have um, very well studied this domain wall using Lorentz transmission electron microscopy. Okay, so this in this material, what means in our material first, this is this was a polycrystalline sample. So we prepared a like a, a TM lamella, like a single crystalline TM lamella by FIB method, uh, which is with thickness of something around 120 nanometer. And our this lamella must have this like it should have like, well oriented it. Because we want to apply the magnetic field along the, like this is a hexagonal crystal, we want to apply the magnetic field along the C axis. So we have seen that from the like uh, all the like uh, uh, our uh, diffraction pattern, this is actually C axis oriented. Then we went to like uh, like the, like Lorentz more, and then when we see in the in focus, we do not see any features in the material. So that is very typical in like in case of normal, like uh, magnetic uh, texture. Then if you go little bit out of focus or this is called under focus or over, over focus, we can see like this stripes type of domains and of structure in this material. Switch on the objective lens uh, magnetic field slowly, very slowly controlled way and we apply a magnetic field to the material. So when we apply magnetic field, you can see at around 3 kilowatts that these stripes, they breaks into some kind of bubble uh, kind of structure. and if you uh, increase the magnetic field at, after a certain magnetic field of something around 5 kilo step, all the spins will align along the magnetic field direction, then the, all the like uh, uh, this Fermion will uh, go up. And we also measure with the different temperature. We have a liquid nitrogen sample holder. So which actually I, go, we go, I got from uh, funding from the DST nanomission. So here actually, um, uh, so, so with the different temperature we could do and we see that when we increase the temperature around 250, you see, we see like in this, like different kind of spin state, like uh, objects stabilize in like, at like one temperature. You can see here, this feature, what we have shown in the, like in, inside the box, this is a typical block spermion, which is with different helicity, okay? But this picture in the like 100 Kelvin and 1200 Kelvin, they are not the, uh, 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 block experiment and initially people have also in other material people have found this kind of feature and they interpret it in a different way. Different people interpret it in different way. Here in some people interpret 
if you see a closer picture of this uh, in a 100 kelvin uh, microstructure magnetic microstructure you see there is a black uh, kind of thing here then a, there is a white and then again the black and some people interpret it, it as a s2 like they call it a bispermian uh, with topological number or winding number two and some people say it is a type two bubble which is have a topological number zero and which one is correct and these two are very well known this is the block spermian now, which is correct actually in this work we did something some very uh, something uh, uh, different to find out whether this is like bispermian or like uh, this is a conventional like type 2 bubbles so what we do uh, uh, so in our like uh, to measure the spermian in this material we have to tilt the sample a little bit uh, actually uh, to go away from the like the zone axis otherwise the zone axis we have, I mean, the sample is completely black we cannot uh, see anything that tilting always gives some in plane magnetic field to the sample. Although we are applying the magnetic field uh, out of plane, always gives some in plane magnetic field to the sample. When we have some in plane magnetic field, now in the, so somehow at this at the first figure alpha beta equal to zero, this is like in plane magnetic field is almost zero. We uh, tilting is almost zero. But then we control the way when we tilt the sample in the beta, so we see this kind of feature uh, again uh, uh, arises. And then when we tilt in a different direction, alpha minus six, then the, like, this direction of the like, uh, you see this black line are now horizontal, now it becomes vertical. So depending on the direction of the uh, direction of the uh, magnetic field, in plane magnetic field, our like uh, the direction of these like uh, things changes. And this said that this is indirectly a proof that this this structure, what is a, this is originating from the block structure. This is not a new uh, kind of thing. And uh, this can be interpreted as a type two bubble instead of a bispermian. The concept of bispermian is uh, what's wrong. Maybe this is a type two bubble. Okay, so we also did some like simulation, which which we clearly show that by applying the magnetic field, we whatever the structure we uh, uh, stabilize in like in uh, experimentally, also we can do in the same way in the simulation. So which also proved that. The structures are like block spermian, which and then it is going to type two bubbles by applying input magnetic field. And we saw that magnetic anisotropy is very important parameter in this material to stabilize this spermian kind of uh, bubble. And as, I, as you can see, we can stabilize this spermian thing in a very wide temperature range starting from 100 Kelvin to 300 Kelvin. And this are very important for any application purpose of these materials. Okay, with this, I would like to summarize my uh, work uh, here. So we have observed this near room temperature spermian lattice by using Lorentz transmission electron microscopy. We have also observed switching between the topological spermian and non-topological type two bubbles. And the micromagnetic room simulation also support uh, our experimental data. And our results suggest that the type two bubbles are not the fundamental magnetic structure rather by byproduct of the magnetic spermian in this system. Okay. I would like to thank you. Okay. Uh, we have one question from Dr. Bhaskaran. Skirmiums are known to support interesting localized magnon excitations. Some of them are topological. Can you excite and detect them in your lab? Uh, means like uh, magnons. Uh, is he asking about magnons? Uh, uh, magnons, yeah. uh, no. Uh, See, like, are known to support interesting localized magnon excitations. Yeah. Can we uh, detect it yeah. in your lab? In magnets, we can detect in some other like a method, like a, like a FMR technique, yes. But uh, till now, we have not uh, like done that actually. Okay. Uh, but the detection of this cornea and all these things, we can, yes. It means we are doing here only in neither, yes. Okay. We have another question from Professor S. V. Burt. Do you think manganites can also support skirmions? Manganites? Yes. Uh, yes, there are like there are, uh, reports of like... material support skirmions. Yes, there are uh, reports of like uh, bispermian in manganites material. There are uh, like uh, from Procura group, yes. Already there are several reports and they called it bispermian, which actually I mean, there are like lots of controversy and this is nothing but a type 2 bubbles. 
uh, which is generating from the uh, like uh, implant from implant clay from the uh, like but we saw the type fused bubbles are coming from this like block spermia by applying some implant clay. Okay, thank you, uh, Doctor Nair. Uh, thank you. Can electric field couple with the skirmions in non centrosymmetric systems, or in other words, can do the skirmions you have in the centrosymmetric yes. system break inversion symmetry? Uh, with electric field, uh, yeah, this is a good uh, question. So, like, if you have like this kind of material where like we can change like uh, central uh, 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 symmetric like uh, by electric field, then it could be like obviously like uh, till now there is no such, such report, but it means it would be interesting to study if it is going to like non-central symmetric. Then in that case, we should not get a different helicity. All the all kind of these thing bubbles, we should get a really a block with a particular block experiment with a one only single like helicity. Uh, I think uh, that's all we have for questions and comments on your presentation today. Uh, thank you once again, Dr. Hai, for a very interesting talk.